Hello guys, welcome back to TechDoz and in this video we will learn about caching and this is from basics of system design. Uh, stay tuned till the end because we will be discussing multiple follow up questions based on basics of caching. So let's get started. Let's assume that uh, there are users and there is a database and all our files are present in the database and the user needs to read the files from the database. So user will send the request uh, to the DB and then we'll get the response. Now let's assume that the read latency, I mean the time it takes to read anything from the database is 50 ms, that is 50 milliseconds. Therefore the time to make 100 reads will be 100 times 50 ms and that will be 5000 ms and that is equivalent to taking 5 seconds. Okay. For most of the applications and services, 80% of the DB queries just accesses 20% of the data according to the Pareto principle. So most of the queries are repetitive. Therefore, if we can save the data in a faster memory or even locally, then we can get the data faster, right? So let's say that we have inserted a fast memory in between the user and the database in such a way that the user query will not directly go to the database, but the user will make a request and the request will be sent to the fast memory. Now the fast memory, if it has the data, then it will send the response. Otherwise, if it doesn't have the data, then the fast memory will send the request to the database and then get the data from the database, load it here and again send it back to the user. Now this fast memory is our cache memory and in the case when the user is asking for data and the cache actually has that data and it directly uh, reverts back with the data rather than going to the database then that is called cache hit. Otherwise if the user is asking for data and the cache doesn't have that data and so the cache has to ask from the DB, read from the DB, get it and then return back to the user. That scenario is called cache miss. Okay. Now since we know about the cache, how fast are the cache reads? Now you can see that one read is 1 ms and uh, this is kind of worst case which I am taking 1 ms. Therefore for making 100 reads it will be just 100 ms. Compared to the database this is 50 times faster. Okay, So it makes sense to have everything loaded into the cache. I would like to announce about our live training programs, data structures and algorithms which is interview dose and system design which is design dose. If you are looking for making a switch from service to product based or even make a product based to product based top tier switch and aiming for your dream company, this is the best curriculum you can ever join. I'll be your mentor throughout the cohort and I will help you clear all your doubts in the one on one sessions. You can know more about this by querying us on the WhatsApp number or you can also visit our website techdose.co.in. But why are we even using database? We can do the job with using cache 50 times faster, right? Uh, but the thing is the cache memory is non-persistent. That means if you restart the cache or if the cache memory actually crashes or somehow uh, this is turned off then you cannot recover the data. The data will be entirely lost like you lose the data when you restart your PC. Everything in the RAM gets lost. So it is a volatile memory. So cache is not a persistent memory. And the second thing is cache memory is very costly. Therefore it is smaller in size. Whereas the database is very cheap and so it can be very large and it can accommodate a large amount of data. And database is also persistent memory right so you can think the difference between our hard disk compare it to the database and the ram compare it to the cache cache actually complements our design uh, but it doesn't replace the database that we will learn in the next slide now the question is if cache is smaller then how do we fetch all the data from the cache so according to our assumption uh, the cache hit rate is let's say 80 percent that is 80 percent of the time the user get all the read from the cache so 80% queries are served by the cache and 20% are served by the DB. Now we know that the read latency for the cache hit is 1 ms that we had assumed on the previous slide. And what will be the read latency for cache miss? 1 ms for checking if the data is present in the cache and then 50 ms for the database read and that adds up to 51 ms. Therefore the total time for 100 reads considering 80% of the queries are served by cache and 20% by the DB is 80% of 100 queries into 1 MS plus 20% of 100 queries into 51 MS and that adds up to 1100 MS in total. Now if you compare this with 100% cache hit, what if all the queries were served by the cache 
and uh, we never had to go to the database in in that scenario it would take 100 ms in total for 100 queries that is 1 ms per query and if you compare with the other extreme scenario that is uh, if all the queries were actually hitting the database and nothing was present in the cache in that kind of scenario uh, you will be reading everything from the database that is 51 ms per read and that will be 5100 ms in total so if 80 percent is our cache hit then we are at 1100 ms which is you can say five times better as compared to if we do not use a cache so it is a much better deal to use a cache since the cache memory was smaller we could not load everything into the cache but we loaded the most frequently accessed items and that is how we improved the uh, latency of reads so this is how cache complement database in our architecture so is speed the only benefit of having a cache uh, the answer is no let's assume that if the cache hit rate is 80 percent uh, then the db gets 80 percent less queries because if the user actually asks 100 requests from the cache then 80 requests are given from the cache back to the user without even referring to the database and only 20 requests are sent to the database this only happens if the data was not present in the cache right so uh, we are reducing the load on the database if the load on the database increases uh, then the database can come down if it is overloaded it can crash and therefore your service can be entirely unavailable right therefore by adding cache we are reducing the load on the database so we are reducing the chance of database crashes by overloading therefore we are increasing the availability of our service so the benefits we get after adding cache into our design is speed and efficiency because it uh, leads to low latency and hence the service feels more responsive and the second thing we discussed was reducing the database load and therefore the chance of database crashes due to overloading will decrease and hence our service availability will increase one such example is memcached i hope you were able to understand about basics of cache we will look at more detailed explanation in our later videos like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this system design videos see you guys in the next video thank you